President Putin has warned the West not to cross what he called a red line with Russia, stating that it would trigger an asymmetrical, rapid and harsh response. When a nuclear armed country fights to the end, it will have consequences far beyond the borders. Hurra! We are not part of this conflict. И вы окажетесь втянутыми в этот конфликт помимо своей воли. NATO foreign ministers met in Brussels on the 4th of March. They dedicated the entire meeting to the so-called Russian brutality and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. The meeting was attended by the foreign ministers of the bloc's member states. The head of the EU diplomacy, Joseph Borrell, and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Sweden, Finland and Ukraine were also invited. Following the results of this event, NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg held a press conference. When asked about the creation of a no-fly zone over Ukrainian territory, Jens Stoltenberg in particular answered the following. We are not part of this conflict and we have a responsibility to ensure it does not escalate and spread beyond Ukraine because that would be even more devastating and more dangerous with even more human suffering. NATO is not seeking a war with Russia. We have made it clear that we are not going to move into Ukraine, neither on the ground or in the Ukrainian airspace. And of course, the only way to implement a no-fly zone is to send NATO planes, fighter planes, into Ukrainian airspace and then impose that no-fly zone by shooting down Russian planes. And our assessment is that uh, we understand the uh, desperation, but we also believe that if we did that, we end up with something that could end in a full-fledged war in Europe involving many more countries. You see folks, NATO aren't prepared to fight Russia. If they do, they can expect the big war, Malhama, Armageddon, Maha Proloi. But NATO is backing down for now. Of course, things can change, but for now, things are going according to Russia, just the way we like it. The decision not to participate in military operations on the territory of Ukraine has been supported by all NATO member countries, without exception. On March the 4th, 2022, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the same thing, only more repeatedly. Is helping uh, to strengthen NATO itself. And as the Secretary General said, ours is a defensive alliance. We seek no conflict, but if conflict comes to us, we're ready. The issue of the United States and NATO no-fly zone over Ukraine has been removed from the agenda. The only country that can establish a no-fly zone over Ukraine is Russia. This approach of NATO clearly upsets the puppet president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. Zelensky made a video message on the same day and said the following. Today was a NATO summit, a weak summit, a confused summit. An interesting point, on March the 4th, 2022, the head of European diplomacy, Joseph Borrell, following an extraordinary meeting of the foreign ministers of the EU member states said the following. No, we are not going to ask Zelensky to, to surrender. So therefore it seems that according to the EU, Zelensky should die a hero in the defense of Kiev. NATO has a treaty among member states, the North Atlantic Treaty of April the 4th, 1949. And it has a wonderful article in there. It's referred to as Article 5 on NATO's collective self-defense, emphasizing their determination to ensure the security of their allies in the bloc on the European continent. And I'll quote you the article. 
The parties agreed that an armed conflict attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all and consequently they agree that if such an armed attack occurs, each of them in exercise of their right of individual or collective self-defense recognized by Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations will assist the party or parties so attacked by taking forthwith individually and in concert with the other parties. Such actions as it deems necessary, including the use of armed force to restore and maintain the security of the North Atlantic area. Not an obligation of each NATO member country. This means that a member of the alliance can be limited to economic sanctions in response to an armed attack on one or more NATO countries. The use of armed force isn't necessary. By the way, in August 2021, the United States and NATO abandoned Afghanistan, effectively handing it over to the Taliban because they couldn't fight them. At the same time, Afghanistan had the official status of the main ally of the United States outside of NATO. The decision of the North Atlantic Alliance not to involve NATO forces directly in the conflict in Ukraine is reasonable. It really reduces the risk of a full-scale war in Europe. It reduces the risk of Malhama. It reduces the risk of Mahaproloi, Armageddon. And we could easily get there if things escalate into all-out nuclear war. NATO's sober approach is based on real alignment of forces. Russia, as in the former USSR, maintains strategic nuclear parity with the United States. At the same time, over the past 20 years, Russia has managed to create the most advanced strategic and non-strategic nuclear forces in the world. As of December 2021, the share of modern weapons in Russia's nuclear triad has reached a historical record of 89.1%. And of course, I'm quoting a Russian newspaper here but believe me it is true sure Malhama Armageddon can still happen that's if NATO makes the wrong moves because going by NATO's sources for the first time NATO has deployed a NATO response force made up of 130 aircrafts on high alert and more than 200 ships from the far north to the Mediterranean Sea but they're unlikely to make the wrong move Russia neutralizes their position by having a sufficient number of non-strategic tactical nuclear weapons. Russia has about 2,000 tactical nuclear warheads in a special military operation in Ukraine. The armed forces of the Russian Federation actively use, in particular, the operational tactical missile system called Iskandar, which has a range of up to 500 kilometers. This missile system can also carry nuclear warheads. At this very moment, direct military intervention by the United States and NATO in order to prevent the Russian special military operations in Ukraine is completely out of the picture. External conditions allow Russia to complete this operation successfully and it will be successful. Russia will be successful. Ukraine will be divided into four pieces and the entire world will watch in silence. You obey, you will be safe. If you obey, you, be, you will be safe. Alter your course immediately, over. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> 